Cool. I think we are ready to get started. What do you, what do you guys think? Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm going to uh, just uh, change my sharing settings to share my entire desktop. Do you see this sealed, uh, See the same presentation, uh, Rebecca, Dennis? Yep. Oh, cool. All right. So welcome, everybody. Um, it's, uh, it's a really nice day to have you guys over. And uh, today we are going to talk about end-to-end -end encryption, what end-to-end -end encryption is, why is it good uh, for your app, for your IoT devices, for everything that you build, develop, and how can you get started using it? Again, if you guys have any questions, please type it up in the webinar chat. Uh, make it an interact as interactive as possible. So if I see a question, we'll stop, uh, or, or I'll ask Rebecca or Dennis to answer it in the chat window. Um, we are the company behind Twilio's encrypted messaging. Uh, that's how we got famous. Maybe that's how you heard about us. We help uh, many startups uh, to reach HIPAA compliancy and help their GDPR compliancy or just be end-to-end -end encrypted secure uh, using our tech, using our open source SDKs. Today I'm here to announce officially that end-to-end -end encryption is here to stay. It's, it's a true statement. If you look around across all these chat applications and, and then beyond chat, there are healthcare apps that are also becoming end-to-end encrypted, you realize that uh, the only way to remain really secure uh, is to not trust your backend service provider, to not need to trust your backend service provider, but to encrypt the data where it comes in. And that's that's... The, this new philosophy started a wave uh, with WhatsApp and Viber, and now Skype joined the mission too. Um, to you know, these companies don't want to see what their customers are chatting about. They don't want to be able to breach it out, or they don't want external governments or hackers to spy on what people are talking about. What is what is the big deal um, with end-to-end -end encryption? So in this graph here, you can see a typical app as, as it's built today. You have two people, let's say, chatting or sharing a document with two mobile phones or two browsers. And you can see that they are encrypting the data on the device for the HTTPS traffic uh, to go over the wire securely and then land on the web server here and then the web server has access to all that data. And then the web server does something with the data, writes it into the database, and the database is encrypted with one single key that's uh, stored next to the database file. That's what we call at rest encryption or DAR, data at rest encryption. If you, if you look at this diagram here, anybody could see that data is available at multiple points and, uh, and it's available in your front-end servers, in the memory uh, of the front-end servers, can show up, may show up in log files, and also in the database. It's really easily breachable if you have one single key to decrypt a database file. That's how applications are built today, and that's one of the key reasons of many data breaches. What is end-to-end -end encryption? End-to-end -end encryption is when we encrypt that piece of data, on the mobile device or in the browser before we send it up to the web server or to your cloud. So the HTTPS traffic will protect the already client-side encrypted data. So when it lands on your web server, it's, it remains encrypted. It goes encrypted into your database and it goes down encrypted into the other user's phone. Now, enter encryption has limitations because data won't be available on your server to crunch on, but uh, it doesn't have to be that way. It's not an all or nothing game. You can decide to encrypt only specific fields or messages that you don't want to see, or you don't want your cloud service provider to see, or you don't want to accidentally breach out, and then you can leave everything else unencrypted. Stuff that is not hurting somebody's privacy. Make sense? This new, this paradigm shifts really gives an opportunity to several apps to differentiate themselves 
by security. These guys, uh, Capitol Bells, are the chat app in the White House in the U.S. They're anti-encrypted chat app for politicians in White House and Capitol Hill. Uh, how cool is that? These guys in Germany um, from Hassel Plattner Institute. Hassel Plattner is uh, SAP's co-founder. He um, he has this uh, uh, institute at the University of Potsdam in Germany to to build great you know risky new ideas and and this project is one of them health cloud that builds an end-to-end encrypted health records management platform for apps for mobile apps to use it's sharing of patient data between health apps and to an encrypted where the patient can revoke access to any app or any data or or any uh, any doctor or or caregiver at any point of the, in time and then we have examples in the IoT space as well. Um, Sora builds intelligent light bulbs that uh, will soon compete with Alexa, having this mini computer uh, inside the bulb. And that mini computer here has several sensors that capture your movements, your your sound. You can make you can give commands to the light bulb, and then data every sense and all sensory data will get encrypted on this mini computer before it goes up to the cloud so it's so it's a it's also a new it's a paradigm shift in iot as well that even though millions of sensors are capturing billions of data points about us it doesn't have to be unsecure it can be secure it can be unencrypted as secure as your chat app Entered encryption is this is this new world uh, that is similarly disruptive as Docker was a few years ago when they launched uh, the concept of containerizing infrastructure. In entered encryption, we are containerizing your data, and uh, and you share that data with other people, and and you manage that chunk of data wherever that data is securely. End-to-end -end encryption technically doesn't require HTTPS to travel on the internet because data is already encrypted. So you can have pieces of end-to-end -end encrypted data anywhere on cheap storage, on, on storage that is unprotected or, uh, or anonymously published on the web like a CDN, yet your data still remains safe. And I'll show you an example of that in a few minutes. So... And, and guys, type it up if you have any questions, uh, please. In the next few minutes, I'm going to explain to you how end-to-end -end encryption works, and I'll show you a real simple explanation of an end-to-end -end encrypted key management uh, in a chat application. This is a chat app. Um, this is a front-end in your cloud, in, in your AWS subscription, and this is your database where you'll store the chat messages um, before you deliver it to other users. This is how this app works today from a hacker's perspective. You have the last message. You, you, you want to send that last message uh, to another user. So we just send that string over via HTTPS, which encrypts the payload, as we call it. And it lands on your web server and then it, it terminates, which means that the clear data is now available on the front-end server. Your front-end server has access to it. Your front-end server may have somebody looking at its memory, looking at log files. So your data is not safe there. Or your front-end server can accidentally breach, breach it out. Anyway, when the data uh, travels to, da to the database, between the two servers, it's encrypted again using HTTPS, TLS, and then it terminates again on the database server. And then you, the database server will add this data to a database table as a record. And that database file where the table is will be encrypted with this one single key that is sitting on the database server. So if you look at this whole process, uh, it technically is, is a joke. It really only protects data on the wire 
uh, but it's not protecting data and uh, protecting data anywhere else. And the database data at rest encryption is 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 also a joke. It's a key that sits next to the data. It's like it's like having a million dollar door, uh, and and you leave the key under the pot by the door. So what is end-to-end -end encryption uh, in contrast of this? So you have the same message that one user wants to send to another. You encrypt the message with a key on the client device or in the browser. And now that key will be going over HTTP, sorry, that encrypted data will be going over HTTPS encrypted. And when it lands on the web server, it still is encrypted. And then it goes to a database, still encrypted, gets written into a database record, still encrypted. So from a hacker's point of view, there's not a lot of uh, juicy stuff in here um, to, uh, to expect. How does it work? How does all that key management work uh, now that you understand the basic concept? Um, if you heard about private and public keys, um, if you don't, I'll explain, then you know that a key pair uh, consists of a public key and a private key. The public key you give out to everybody to encrypt data with for you, which only your private key will be able to decrypt. So you keep the private key on your device or in your pocket in a safe place. So again, green is public key that encrypts data for you and that's publicly available. And the pink one is, is your own private key, your user's private key that will decrypt data that's been encrypted for you. So this is how this message is encrypted but it's no fun to encrypt data for yourself. That's why we have uh, in, our, in, in the Virgil product, that's why we have a cloud component where users can access each other's public keys. So this guy, Chris, can access Maria's public key if he wants to encrypt this message to her. So simply, he downloads Maria's public key from the cloud, encrypts the message, and then we'll write it into the database. Maria will download that message and then her private key will open it up. That's, that's the simple use case. Hope that makes sense. If you guys want me to stop and maybe move back two steps, uh, please don't be shy, just type it up. It's, uh, these, are, these are new concepts to, to most people. Cool. So. So now we understood how a message can be encrypted by, uh, yes, thanks, if you can pause. Uh, Kim, yes, go ahead, uh, ask me a question. So there's a question coming from Kim. He says, so that private public you just talked about, I'm reading it up, Kim. That was for a message between Chris and Maria, yes. Um, so, so moving back here, um, so, Yes, uh, so in this example, yes, Chris, this is Chris, uh, this is the device of Chris. Uh, so Chris's iPhone, and uh, when he wants to send this message, so let's say Chris and Maria are in this chat together, they are chatting one by one. Um, so if Chris wants to send this message to Maria, then he will need Maria's public key to encrypt that message, and then it goes over to the web front end database. You know, you, you write your data into your database as you normally would. And um, when Maria receives the message, imagine that this is now Maria's private key. It will decrypt the message that Chris was encrypting with Maria's public key. Make sense? Cool. Thank you. Now, but but Kima and everybody else, you guys probably, your mind is probably where uh, it, where my, my mind is again, uh, is, okay, that's cool when Chris and Maria are chatting, but what if every single one of these messages are encrypted with, uh, with user public keys? What if Mark joins the chat? Do we have to re-encrypt every single message for Mark so that his private key decrypts them, right? 
And this is this is where I'm taking it to the next level for you to for your mind to to really capture this. When uh, in order for multiple users to participate in a chat session, for example, or in order for you know, if you have a very long chat session between two users and now you want to add a third user and you want to avoid re-encrypting the entire chat history with the third user's public key, this is what you can do. You create a thread key. So every single time you create a new chat thread between users, you create a thread key and you'll be using that thread key to encrypt every uh, so, so yeah, so that thread key will be available, the public key in the cloud, and the private key, uh, bear with me, on the devices. And that thread key will encrypt every single message in that thread and will decrypt the messages. And now, instead of messages one by one, you will encrypt the thread key with the user's public keys. Make sense? So here's the thread key that decrypts every message in that thread. And now if you want Chris, Mark, and Steve to chat, you will encrypt the thread key with their public keys. And now that encrypted thread key, you can distribute it uh, to the users and only their own private keys, so three users private keys will be able to decrypt that thread key so here is chris having access to the encrypted thread key and because we used chris's public key to encrypt the thread key now his private key opens it up and suddenly he can use the thread key to decrypt the messages this way if you add future users to this thread all you have to do is download uh, iPhone's public key and also encrypt this clear thread key with his public key and make sure that he has the encrypted thread key. Does it make sense? Any questions? I'll just stop here for 30 seconds and see if uh, somebody types up a question. I, I really want to make sure that this comes across because this is a really important concept in end-to-end -end encrypted key management. And this is what makes a big difference when you guys implement this in your apps. This is what makes a huge difference uh, that you can now have these keys that you encrypt every piece of content with it. It can be documents, it can be user profile, it can be chat messages, anything. And, and that's how you distribute that key in a, in a secure and to an encrypted manner. So here comes another question. So... It is not just the thread key, it is Chris key plus thread key that does encryption. Yes. Um, so Chris, in this simple demo, Chris, Chris's private key uh, stays with him. He doesn't give that out to any, anybody else. It is the thread key that, is, that opens up the whole conversation. And the key management, what the key management does is distributes that thread key securely between the users who are permitted to participate in this chat thread. But the user private keys will always remain with the users on the device. Does it make sense? Yes, yeah. Uh, so, oh, oh um, another just a clarifying uh, question. Um, so, the thread key does the encryption. Uh, uh, actually, the thread public key does the encryption, which means that anybody in, the, in this system in the world, even, they are, even if they are not part of the chat, can technically send a message uh, to, uh, to the chat. But the private key, the thread private key, does the decryption. So in key management and cryptography, what matters uh, is always if you can decrypt a secret data or not. So we protect the private key that decrypts uh, the data, but in the same way, you can also protect the public key if you want to make sure that no users that don't participate in this, uh, in this thread can send message in a thread, you can also encrypt the public key.
Yes, very good question. Uh, so, so the way the way the flow works again is when uh, when when Maria or, or Steve sends a message to the thread, he has the thread key uh, and he has the the public key for the thread. So Steve will be using the green key, the public key for the thread, to encrypt a new message, and then he will send it to the database that encrypted new message. And all the, all the other two users who are participating in a chat will be using the thread key to decrypt the message. And the way we distribute that thread key, again, is we encrypt the thread key with the three chat users' public keys and we'll send a copy of that encrypted private key to each user so that they have access to it. And only their private key will be able to decrypt the thread key. So that's the basic concept. That is that is the most basic end to encrypted key management uh, that, that you guys should be aware of. And if you have any questions after this session, I'm always happy to hop on a call with you to explain it even more. It is it is new concept to most people, uh, to most developers. It was new to me when I, when I learned it and to everybody else. Uh, but this is super important. This is the technique that allows you to distribute keys securely between users in a system. So if you, um, uh, Kim and every, anybody else, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm, I'm always on Slack. Uh, we will, you also see in a second, I'll show you how you can join our Slack. Uh, but you can always ping me in Slack and we can always discuss your ideas and how this fits with your app. Okay, let me move on. Now let's see some code. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I shall see you, uh, show you some code. Um, so this is the Virgil website. Uh, probably you guys came across this. If not, um, this is where we are, virgilsecurity.com. And this is how you sign up. Uh, in fact, I already signed up. So when you sign up for a free uh, Virgil account, now what, Virgil, what your Virgil account will do is let me move back here. What your Virgil account will do, it will give you all the SDK to do this on every platform. And if it will give you the backend service, the cloud service that does this, the, the storage of keys, re quick, fast retrieval of keys, and, and the client SDKs will do encryption and decryption for you. So, so the one tech you need is our a Virgil account, uh, sorry, the one thing you need to use our tech is a Virgil account that will give you access to this cloud component. So this is how you get started. So you sign up virgilsecurity.com and um, we, we are working hard every day to make the sign up flow and, and onboarding sim as simple as possible because we know that end-to-end -end encryption is a difficult topic so we want to make sure that you, you guys uh, spend minimum cycles doing unnecessary things. So this is how you start. So once you sign up, um, we, we have three steps, really simple steps to get you started with a, a simple Node.js app um, to, to look at end-to-end -end encryption in, in practice. So the first step is we have a tutorial app downloaded from GitHub. So I just click there. And I have the zip file coming down. It's the GitHub repo in a zip. And this is how it looks like. Oh, oh yeah. Let me, let me pull that to here. You, you guys stop. So this is how the zip uh, file looks like. Uh, just open it up here. Um, I'll show you the code in a second. Um, this is the most important file, index.html, where I'll be explaining the code for you. But before uh, we do that, there's one more step that you need to do is to download your account data so that you connect your sample app into this cloud service. So important. So I'll download the config file, which is generated on the client side in the browser with your with your account private key because uh, it's it's super super important that Virgil doesn't have access to your account data 
So we built the virtual service also in, an, in a totally zero knowledge and to an encrypted manner so that you only you have access to your API keys, to your private key uh, for your account. We don't, which means that we won't be able to, to interpret or, or see the data that you're using in your account. So here's your config file. Um, so I downloaded the config file. Uh, I go back to my download folder. Uh, so what I'll be doing, I'll just dragging this config file into here. It's dropped. Cool. So third step is I'll, um, I'll spin up a command window or terminal window for Mac users. And I'll put it here. And uh, I'll be running three commands so first i'll be um, stepping into my downloads folder and then i'll be um, going into my encryption js master folder this is where the code is and then i run an npm install and npm start now if you guys don't have node.js npm is a node.js uh, package uh, get the latest version here it doesn't take more than two minutes to install Node.js. Okay, so it's installed. And then I'll start up my Node.js web server, which is now listening on port 8888. And look how cool we are. You don't even have to type in port 8888. Just click here. Awesome, huh? <laughs> and I'm opening up two windows here uh, with the command uh, key. So I have two users that I can demo this stuff with. All right, let's get started. Um, so let me take this guy to be a separate window. So now I have two instances of my demo app running for you guys. Okay. So what I'll be doing is I'll, um, I'll I'll register two users. Um, so let's say Alice, uh, actually, I'll, I'll register Bob here, Bob6, with a secure password. And I'll show you what registration means uh, in practice in, from the key management perspective. And then I have Alice6 with a password. Cool. Now, if I go back here, what did I do? Now I have provisioned, I've registered the user, which means that now on my, in my browser, I have a private key for Alice and a private key for Bob for two different uh, users. And then they also have a public key in Virgil's cloud. Okay, so I have the whole infrastructure ready to run this application. So I'll show you how, um, uh, I'll show you one simple use case. Uh, let's say I want to encrypt um, some data for myself. So I'm Alice here on the, in the left browser. Hello, me. I'll encrypt a piece of data. And then I just click on it. It's copied. And I'll go to the decrypt part. Paste. Decrypt. It's done. Now, how do I encrypt? To Bob. So I say, Bob6. Hello, Bob. What's up? I encrypt it. I copy it. Can I encrypt a piece of data that I decrypted for Bob? Uh -uh. No, because it's been encrypted for Bob. Remember here. And the first example, now before the thread key, I encrypted. Yeah, this message for Bob, or Chris encrypted it to, uh, to Maria. So having said that, let's test if it works. So I go to Bob's screen, and then I just paste this gigantic blob in here, decrypt it. Wow. Because Bob has his private key on the device, now he can decrypt it. So how does Bob respond to Alice in a chat? Alice? Doing well. You. 
copy it to clipboard. And now I go to Alice, I delete this and paste it here, the message from Bob, and it works. Now, let me show you another trick, which is taking us to the next, next step. What if Alice wants to reply to Bob, but she also wants to be able to see the chat message, right? Her own message in a chat history. It's, uh, it's quite default nowadays. Um, want to grab a coffee in five? Now, the trick here is I encrypted the same piece of data for two users at the same time. Right? So if I go back here and decrypt it with Alice, wow, I can do it. And I can go to Bob and I can decrypt it here too. Wow, I have a chat application that is working. So in principle, if you think that, that not in principle, technically, if you think about it, I can take this entire base64 encoded stuff, I can go up to my Facebook uh, wall, or let's say maybe to Twitter, tweet it out to the entire world, but only Bob and me would be able to decrypt it. Now we have an end-to-end -end encrypted social network. <laughs> That's what you know Facebook deserves <laughs> and, and Twitter. So, so I, can, I can totally do that. Uh, do you guys have any questions from this sample app before I go and show you the code? Uh, type it up in the chat window, and uh, and uh, me, Dennis, Rebecca will be very happy to reply. Uh, while you may be typing up your questions, let me show you the code. Um, so remember, this was the sample app uh, that hopefully you you download and and do the same after this webinar. Um, so you open the public uh, folder here, and there's an, uh, in, uh, oh, yes, there's a question from uh, one of the attendees. Thank you. So does the encryption increase the size of the payload? Yes, big time. Uh, although, uh, let me show you something. So uh, I don't have a counter here, but how many lines of code is, oh, sorry, how many lines of base64 is this, uh, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Two, three, four. Twenty-four lines. Uh, this guy. However, so twenty-four lines. So if I want to um, encrypt a longer message, uh, let me encrypt a longer message. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Let me see. Um, so it's 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 a much longer message. Encrypt it. Now let's see how many lines of code is that instead of 24 previously. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. No, one, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, thirty-three. So this uh, this was seven lines of clear text was thirty-three uh, lines in uh, encrypted, and one line was twenty-four. So it's not linear. We have lots of header data here, but as soon as you are over the header, it's it's not a big payload, not a big change. Um, uh, I hope that answers your question. And there is another question. Uh, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Um, a question from Rebecca is, if somebody, uh, somebody, uh, someone is trying to add chat to their app or build a chat app, how does this interact with other tools they can use, like Twilio or PubNub? Awesome question, Rebecca. Thank you for asking that. Uh, so you can, you can totally do what I just showed you here and send the encrypted data over with PubNub or Twilio or anybody else. Um, so you can totally do that. It, uh, it's it's going to make your whole chat app into an encrypted and your chat provider, Twilio, PubNub, uh, anybody else won't be able to see your data. Uh, so really, really good question. Um, that's the funky thing with end-to-end -end encryption. It doesn't matter what the use case is 
all you do is you encrypt the data before you send it up somewhere. And now it's encrypted and then you decrypt it on the other end. And this technique, you'll be using this technique to arrange the keys between the users. So let me show you the code. Um, and if there are any, any other questions, please type them up. Um, so here is my index HTML in the, in the sample app um, that, um, that you downloaded on the, on the portal. Let me drag that into my code editor and let me show you how that works. Um, so it's, it's a Hello World app, technically. It's encrypt a piece of text uh, to somebody or, or decrypt it. Um, so let me, let me roll down to, um, to where we do some of the basic, uh, I'll show you the registration first. Um, so let me go down to the helper classes. Um, create key. Yeah, this is where we create the key. Um, so when somebody signs up, with a, when Alice signed up with a username and password, we'll create the key here. Remember in the presentation, where is my presentation? Here, no. Anyway, remember in my presentation, uh, oh yeah, here. Uh, remember in my presentation, we, uh, we created the private key uh, for the user. So this is where we create the private key. And then the next line is you create a card. This is what we call a card here. In the Virgil uh, card service, uh, in this cloud service, the public keys we call cards because it's cards plus metadata about your user, like what's his name and email address and you know stuff that you want to store in there. So now this is the basic infrastructure. Now you have a user. And, and, then, and then you need to publish that card on the, on the Virgil card service, make sure that you verify the user if it's genuine, do an email verification maybe, or a text message verification. And then when Alice logs in, you load the key from uh, uh, in the browser, or if you're on an Android or iPhone device, you load the key from the, the key storage of the device, and then you're done. You can start decrypting stuff that was encrypted for you. Now let me show you how we uh, encrypt data. Yeah. So so we um, actually we are using this one here. Uh, we are using encrypt for multiple. Um, so all you have to do is pass on the message that you want to encrypt. If you remember in my demo, this is the message. And then the list of recipients uh, that you want to encrypt that data for. That's how you encrypt. That's it. It's, this is how simple it is. And then let's look at decrypt. Um, here's decrypt. All you do when you receive this data in the text box, all you have to do is decrypt the encrypted text. That's all. And here comes a, uh, a comment question from Dennis. Um, uh, so Dennis, why don't you um, why didn't you say it out loud? I just don't don't want to interrupt you. Oh, so, no, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's why the message is so long. So uh, the encrypted message contains an information about the algorithms, uh, key types, uh, recipients, the symmetric keys, and so on. So, but if you uh, decided in your application to use only one algor algorithm with one keys type and so on, so it would be really really small message mm -hmm. and uh, so uh it also available in our crypto library and sdk so it's pretty easy to uh use this approach so cool. it's just like simple example that uh david demonstrates cool and so so that means uh, going back here if i encrypt only for for bob the same message instead of 33 lines uh, will be smaller right 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. 
So, so it's 24 uh, lines uh, for that because it contains data. And if you encrypt it to multiple people, then we'll have multiple versions of the encrypted blob uh, in the, at one string, right? That's right. It's, it's, it's kind of a separate symmetric key for each recipient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. And, and the beauty of our SDKs and this whole concept of virtual cards and SDKs is we make it super simple for you guys. So what you saw in, on my screen, there's a lot of um, framework code here to make the, uh, the sample app nice. And that's probably something we'll strip off and, and make it make it even simpler. But in technic, uh, technically, we are talking about five lines of code uh, on the client device uh, or in the on the browser. One line of code is to create the initial user key. Uh, this one. Another line of code is to publish uh, the virtual card, and then the third line of code is to encrypt the message to multiple recipients, and the fourth line of code is to decrypt the message. And, and yeah, there's an extra line of code when you log in with the user to load the private key uh, into memory. So we're talking about five lines of code to have this powerful end-to-end uh, -end encrypted infrastructure around any apps that you build or in any apps around any data uh, storage and retrieval use case around your chat app or anything that you build. You can use end-to-end -end encryption to encrypt data before you send it up and decrypt the data when it comes down and do that key management in a way that nobody else can access to the decryption keys. Any other questions? And thank you, Dennis, for, for adding that. Uh, no problem. So, and I also wanted to say, you guys, that you can... Uh, uh, see all of the examples of the code uh, here on our website. We also uh, have uh, uh, our crypto library and SDKs open source on GitHub, so you can check them out as well. Oh, mm -hmm. here, here is another question. How and where does the private key get stored on the user's device? We have uh, various answers on, on various platforms. Uh, Dennis, you want to Take that? Yep, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, every device and every uh, yeah, every device has its own uh, secure storage. Like uh, Android has secure store, and iPhone has a keychain. So we are storing uh, the private key depending on what platform we're using, right? So uh, this is make. So yeah, it depending on our, what platform we use. So. And, uh, and Kim, we are also uh, launching soon a technology um, that will enable you to store your user private keys or, or back up your user private keys on the device so you're not relying on the device's built-in private key storage uh, feature, but rather every login time you can re-download that private key and every time when the session, uh, uh, session goes off, or a user logs out, you can delete the private key from the device. Uh, with this new service, will enable you to to use the user's password, login password on the client device, to secure that key before you back it up into our cloud. That's a new feature we are rolling out, and it's going to be uh, much more secure than if you would normally encrypt uh, a, a key with a password. Uh, it's a technology that we'll probably explain in a, in a future webinar. Any other questions uh, from the audience? And you guys can always find us on Slack. So if you, uh, where is my browser? Uh, now I'm going to go back into normal browser mode. Um, so if you, if you guys have signed up uh, already, uh, you can always... Um, and maybe you missed this tutorial to get started, uh, you can always restart the tutorial here. I would encourage you guys to go through these steps, really get your hands dirty, uh, understand the concepts, look at this simple app uh, that we showed you, browse through the code, modify it, and, and get, used to, um, get used to it. And also there's a link here, ping us on Slack. Uh, you can click this one, and then you'll find yourself in, in Virgil's Slack channel, 
where you can you can speak to us. We are happy to take any questions you have about cryptography in general or about Virgil's um, services. We're also happy to um, to invite anybody who wants to hop on a one-to-one -one call and get you started using our tech. So that's all I plan to say today. Anything else from Rebecca or Dennis that you guys wanted to share? Oh, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> I think that covered it for me. Cool. Okay, so um, if you guys have any more questions, please reach out on Slack, join our Slack, sign up for a virtual account, and uh, it's free. Get started with it and start Anton Encrypted today. And thank you for the feedback. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye.